Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome back to my Open TGD Series 10 Let's Play. I do hope you're enjoying the series, and here we are back again with another episode. So, in the last live stream earlier this week, we installed the Wish Off Glassworks, named after one of the Viewer Plus subscribers, and we got some infrastructure in around that to receive all the uh, what was it? It's the uh, soda ash and sand into the glassworks itself and you can see now that both of those are supplied we've transported 80 percent of the glass last month and this is where the glass is coming out of now thank you very much for your comments on that video i don't think we noticed in the live stream but afterwards people noticed that i'd missed this piece of track here so some of the trains we're getting stuck in the first two platforms. So that has just fixed that. So thank you very much. Um, like I said, a number of you commented on that. I do read your comments. I get notifications, I think, for every comment. Uh, I try to reply to as many as possible. But uh, thank you for, very much anyway. Which is good. Because Hellish City is continuing to grow. We are very close to the four thousand mark. And if we look at the goals here, we can see that when we get to four thousand coal is required now we've got some coal i think we need to shift more coal potentially uh we've got let's see we've got loads of coal over here how many trains have we got going to this place oh we've still got all the short ones we need to get rid of them so let's uh remove all of those trains and we will then add back in uh well no we do we need to add more how many trains have we got just two okay well we're producing uh, 468 tons of coal a month and only 16% was transported so assuming that only 16% was transported and we want 100% then we need like five times the amount of trains as what we've got now, I think throwing 10 trains down would probably be a little bit too much but I'm going to control clone it and put another four in to begin with Let's have a look up here and see how things are going at the other coal mine. We've only got two going at the moment. That one's 17% transported. Not as much coal waiting there, but that, that has just have a train left. So let's clone that one as well and maybe just put three in there. See how they get along. So as you've probably guessed, we're, we're going to be looking at Hellish City here. We're on the cusp of needing more and more things uh we had a lot of fun recently over in the no train zone and i want to revisit that soon and probably next episode we'll also get vehicles going in the vehicle challenge as well so that soon we'll actually have all four challenges running at the same time okay so at the moment we're paused which is good it means we can get things sorted and get things planned out we have uh, just under 10 million in the bank so we've got enough money to play around with for a while uh, now the next thing like I said is coal and we've got that mostly sorted I think we'll be all right for coal for a while but if we come into the actual uh, storybook you can see that glass is after coal and then cast iron so assuming that glass is doing quite well where's glass I've lost it here it is uh, then we're going to be needing that cast iron now, for this glass, I feel like we, we there's a few options to improve. For example, we could put engineering supplies at all of these places, and that would severely increase the amount of output from them. So maybe we should do that. Maybe we should just do one of them. Let's do one of them, because uh, there's, a water, there's water near this soda ash mine. And if we kind of, like, cut that corner out a little bit and extend that out just across there and then make a little bit more room i think this will be all right so if we just unpause just for a moment let this area fill up with water and then we can get a wharf in there i'm gonna have wharfs all over the place by the sounds of it so i'm pretty sure it's a wharf we need is it a wharf let's have a quick double check i'm pretty sure but let's go up here we have a wharf here and we can see yes engineering supplies is what we've got now just a minute actually just a minute we've got a wharf over here now we're not providing anything at this wharf yet but what we're going to we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this wharf to drop off sodium hydroxide 
Now, when we do that, I believe the amount of engineering supplies available here will go up. So we'll be able to pipe out engineering supplies from here and send them to other places. That is something I'm looking forward to. So we'll have to keep an eye on that later in the, on in the challenge. But for now, let's just pop one in here. So fund new industry, wharf. And that's going to cost us 2.7 million. There we are, right where we want it. So we just need a little uh, shuttle service. And over these distances, I, again, I don't feel like, um, like trains are appropriate. So... I mean, do we even need? Do we, don't, we don't even need two uh, loading stations. We just do it like this: just a straight road with a straight line and a depot in the middle. I think that will do it. So, if we select cargo types and we select uh, engineering supplies, we can buy and refit that vehicle. And the buy and refit button was brought in in, I think it was version 10 of OpenTTD. So we'll full load there, and we'll come down here and unload. Now, at the minute, this wharf doesn't supply anything because it's brand new and it needs a few game ticks to be able to decide how much it's going to supply and show us on the screen. But we need to deliver, ideally, 80 crates within three months. So that's not too bad. I think a few vehicles should be able to deal with that. So that's 14 crates for one vehicle. And if we make the wild accusation that we can do a trip in a month, then that is somewhere around the 40 crates in one month from one vehicle. So if we clone that so that there's three of them, I think we've got it covered. Bearing in mind that there's literally no maths involved in that whatsoever. I've just thrown them in. Uh, now, speaking of throwing things in, we're getting uh, quite a lot of soda ash building up at the one place that we're not using trains at. So the other three locations, we were using trains. And they're, at the moment, they're only length 10, because these engines that we're using, they don't have a lot of pulling power. So the minimum performance of this vehicle is 0 0.9 horsepower per tonne, which is okay, but we want better. And I, if we make the train longer, that gets even worse. So... But anyway, so they're not having a problem. It's just this one, I think. Um, where we're going to need more vehicles. And that's at its current normal production. We're going to go gung-ho with the production here. And I can't remember. If we go into the GRF settings, down to FERS and the parameters, gung-ho production primary production is 300% in the game settings. For some reason I thought it was 400%, but there we go, confirmed, 300%. So we're going to need three times the amount of vehicles that we already have, and what we already have isn't enough. So how many vehicles do we have? Uh, we have five. Okay, so if we clone this so that that number goes up to 15, that might not be enough. Let's make it 20. Okay, hopefully that many vehicles on this little loop won't be a problem. If you think about them all spread out, that's about 10 each side, a few traveling each way. We might only have to service five vehicles at each end. We can handle six easily. I think we'll be all right there. I think we'll be all right. Okay, um, so that's added in the wharf there. So we've got engineering supplies into one of the soda ash mines. Hopefully that will give us a kick. If we need more kicks, we can do that later with more wharfs. The only problem is, is I don't know how many wharfs we're going to be able to put in around the area. Now, I just want to check to make sure we haven't had any new coal mines while the game was in unpaused recently. So let's go into industry mode, turn off the town names, disable all the stuff and put coal mines back on. Okay, so there's no coal mines in the direct area. There is a coal mine over here we could connect up and two right back over here. So this is this could be quite good to like bring the two resources together and then pipe them down. I'm not exactly sure the best way we'd do that. It's a bit of a long distance. But looking at this, this coal mine up here is actually not that far away. It's a acceptable distance in my opinion. So just to make sure we've got enough coal, let's put that in. So we're doing a lot of kind of input work here we're trying to get as much in as possible so raw materials in the isr the industry stations renewal mod wait hang on stations not raw material there we go 
There's the mineral silo. Make sure we've got the right orientation and we're on drag and drop. And I'm going to drag and drop a 12 by 3. Some people have been saying, hey, Hellish, why are you doing it three wide? Um, why not bigger? Why not smaller and stuff? Okay, so my basic premise for why I use three wide is that with three, in theory, you can have one train loading, one train leaving, and one train coming in to the station all at the same time. And that way you've always got one loading. Now, with the trains being longer, that might not quite be the case until we get faster trains. But, uh, in theory, you shouldn't really need too much more than that, unless you're going to get to the situation where you're getting so much into a station that you're loading more than one train at once. And I don't foresee that happening with just one coal mine. Even at Gung Ho. So I think, think we'll be alright. Okay, let's just get a double depot in here. There we go. Oh, it's not a forced double depot. There we go. We're going we're gonna to have the um, forbidden track removed. Get us... Oh, no, wrong signals. There we go. Brilliant. And signals on the end. And signals on the exit. Now, do we want a depot? Yeah, I think we should have a depot here as well. We could do an off the depot, uh, off the line depot, but to be honest, with the throughput round here, you know, you've only got potentially one or two trains doing movements around this stations at once. You can have one train going into a depot and one train coming out of a double depot. I think that's going to be enough. I think it's going to be enough. Okay, so then this line will put a kink in it. There's nothing wrong with a little kink, a little kink or a big kink. Kinks will not slow trains down. And then we're going to have to bring this in over here somehow. Now looking at the land height, we're on this level of land. If we ignore this hump here, we're actually on this level. So having something that comes out here will be a, a good place to do it. So if we do it here, we're not going to be too close to that junction. And we're going to be before these depots. So that sounds good to me. So first of all, let's get a big diagonal in here. So this diagonal needs to be at least length 12. So we're looking at doing something like that. And then we want a diagonal in here that goes over or under this. And I think on the other lines, what have we done down here? We've done some, um, whatever you call them. Uh, tunnels, that's it. Brain stopped working for a moment then. It happens. So if we had these two lines next to each other and we just did this, that would be no good because the tunnel entrance would be a problem. So what, how close can we have our tunnel entrance? So remove those two, cross a, probably that. what? Oh, we remove signals. I did not mean to remove signals, I meant to remove track. So if we're going, no, down, not up, that's the closest we could have the diagonal in. Uh, is that diagonal going to be long enough? Yes, that's a long enough diagonal. And then that tunnel's fine as well. Good. Yep, yeah, I'm happy with that. There we go. Connect that up. Bring these together. And pop the signals in. So we'll signal here. Always signals before the merge. And because we're just doing two signals all over the place, we'll just do signals like that. Now, we've got to connect these up. So ideally, again, to pre uh, preserve trains and stop them from slowing down, we want at least 12 in length there. And then that has somehow got to connect to this. Now, a big diagonal would be a good idea. The only problem is I want to avoid this river and avoid as much of a... Oh, there's a farm there. Okay, think about that later. I'm getting distracted. So if we have if we have a diagonal that goes through here, that makes this bit easy to do. Because we just connect that straight line up to the diagonal. Remember, you want your tracks to be as direct as possible. Like if your tracks are taking extra routes, extra length, then that is uh, a downturn of efficiency. And we obviously like efficiency. Now here, what are we gonna do? I feel like we should just dig through this. My rationale is twofold. One, this is not the preservation lands. We're allowed to smash things to pieces on this side and preserve things on the other side. Two, 
it's only a little bit of track and it's only a little hill. So if I dig through here, it's not going to like deform an entire mountain. So I will just level this out. There we go. Not too bad. Now, again, this river, we're, it's a big, is it a big river? It's quite a big river. Uh, it's now two rivers. There we go. It's now two separate rivers. And then I also want this to be able to connect up to there. So we're using diagonal digging with by holding control. And that should connect up. Somebody needs to audio balance these music tracks on the jazz jukebox. Some of them appear to be much louder than others. I don't know if that's something that the devs would need to do. Probably not because you have to download it. Right then, so that looks like we're connected up. So let's get those signals in. Yep, that's all good. So we now have a new coal mine. Let's clone some trains. Let's go over here and grab one of our existing trains. I didn't hold control then. We don't want shared orders. I don't think this coal mine was here when we first started putting coal mines in. Could be wrong. Uh, there we go. Oh, I do want that no uh, yeah, skip the order. There we go. And then clone the train so that there are four of them. We're going to go with four. And we want to be able to bring stuff in uh, from a wharf again. So I'm thinking if we just take this natural lake, square off the corner again, unpause the game just a bit so that we get the water coming through. We've got a new wharf under construction. So that's the one that we actually wanted earlier on as well. So we've got our road. You can see our road vehicles in the background there. And at the minute we're doing nothing. But that will change soon. Oh, there we go. Our water's sorted. So then fund new industry. Wharf. Fund. There we go. We've got a wharf in. And we can just take supplies up this short route here. So... Um, we don't we just want it as far away as possible so that we can do the journey as quickly as possible there we go we don't care about making nice long journeys or anything like that we'll have a road depot on the corner why not and again this is a little bit of a longer route so i think maybe a few more vehicles might be needed so we're going to full load here unload there and we'll have five of them to begin with and see how that goes. Right, so we've got a new coal mine in with its engineering supplies. Uh, we've fixed the number of vehicles or trains needed at the other coal mines. Whoa, steady. We can see here that we've got some coming in and loading already. And we've got a new wharf in here for our soda ash mine. And the vehicles are on the way with that. And the new vehicles are coming out for the Soda Ash Mine. And the trains can... Oh, actually, that I used the wrong track for. I didn't use standard track for that. So we can just take that out and pop it in. There we go. So these trains here that were stuck are now no longer stuck. Which is good. Okay, nice. I'm looking forward to being able to get engineering supplies out of this wharf because it's not just going to be, you know, the 108 that, that, that's there now. When we start supplying it with things, that's going to shoot up. Um, ooh, so what? what is next? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the whole point of getting this and doing this is to bolster and improve all the things that need to come into Hellish City. And the next thing on the cookery book... Uh, is that cast iron. Now, cast iron. Let's plan this out. I think the cast iron might actually be in the next live stream. But let's at least have a look at what we need to do and get it sorted, shall we? So if we go to industry chains. And we select cast iron. There we go. This is what we need to get. Now, cast iron only comes from a blast furnace so somewhere we're gonna to have to find a blast furnace to get the cast iron from and bring it into hellish city 
and it needs to go to an engine plant. So somewhere in the city, we're going to have to stick an engine plant in. Probably this one up here, Hellish City Annex. Because we're using this one to bring in glass, we're using this one to bring in the sodium hydroxide, we're using this one for farm supplies, we're using this one for coal, uh, we're using these ones for passengers and mail. I think it'd be nice to have one platform for each. So let's just quickly look at that again. So, so passengers and mail, we've got two there in the middle. Food down the bottom, coal up there, glass over on the far left. Then cast iron, maybe we could have at the top. Sodium hydroxide down here at the bottom, that one's already in. And then electrical parts and vehicles. Well, one of them could be the other station, and then we'd need one more station or to share one. Okay, so that, that seems like relatively okay planning to begin with. So we're going to need an engine plant. So let's make a note of that. Let's put in a sign over here we'll put ep question mark for engine plant okay and then we'll have a we'll have to have a blast furnace out of the city now what do we need for the blast furnace okay so we need three things for the blast furnace to make its production go up a lot iron ore coke and limestone one of those rings a bell so yes the coke is coming from a coke oven and we are already doing that we are already supplying the coke oven with coal and that's the only thing you need to supply it with so we're going to have to take the coke out of this coke oven and away to be processed at the blast furnace wherever that may be so maybe we need a little note there as well uh coke out needed there we are, we got coke out needed there. The other things that we get is the limestone, which comes from a limestone mine and a quarry. Have we got quarry already around here? Is this a quarry? What's that? That is a quarry. So we do have one quarry already hooked up to the network. So we could add platforms here or something like that. Limestone mines, I don't think we have any of them because we have the soda ash mines, don't we? Yes. And an iron ore mine. Oh, I didn't mean to go to that. Um, yep, yeah, there we go. Right, so let's now, with this in mind, have a look at the world map and try and figure out a good place for this blast furnace that's behind my head. Uh, map, map, map. Here we go. World map. This is going to be a bit difficult, but never mind. Let's try and get it on the screen. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. So, we are going to be looking for iron ore mines, so iron ore mines, quarries, which we were looking for previously, and limestone mines. La 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 la. So, where is limestone gone? Somebody's eating the limestone mine option. Seriously, where's the limestone mine? Oh wait, there it is. I just can't see. Okay. Wow, there's quite a few. Okay. Interesting. So, there are loads. That's that's really good. Uh, okay then, so those are the three things that we need. So, out of the four things that provide stuff for the blast furnace, three of them are primary industries, which I've got highlighted on the world map, and one of them is the coke oven, which we have already. So, ideally, we need our blast furnace to be somewhere near but not too far uh, but not too near the coke oven and also near all these things that are highlighted on the map so let's get this map a little bit bigger and have a look around okay it's immediately clear to me that the south is nowhere is that south no we're, we're calling that east the east is nowhere where we're going to be wanting to do this there is not enough raw resources there's a few in the north and a few in the south, but if you if we went over here to the kind of west of Hellish City, there are a lot of resources. Like there's so many of those limestone mines, there's quarries up here. Um, and then we can get to the ones to the north and south. So I'm pretty sure our blast is it blast yeah, our blast furnace wants to be on this side. That means we're gonna be bringing stuff in 
from this west side and I think that really lines up really well with Hellish City Annex and the uh, EP, whatever that was. I can't remember. Engine parts? Engine parts plant? Engine plant? So we take stuff, uh, coke comes in here, we take the coke out there, and we bring in the, uh, I, uh, what was it, the cast iron here at the annex. Right. Nice. So we definitely want something over here on this side. Let's have a look at the topography. And we've got a lot of flat round around Hellish City, but we don't want to disrupt that. We want to leave that spacious and open. There's no real good place around here for it. There's lots of hills and stuff. Uh, if we switch back to industry mode. Yeah, we want to be looking in this area here, really, where all of these things are. And we can start bringing stuff in. You know what? I think somewhere over here might be good, because we've got the option of these industries, and it's on this side of the tracks that can go into the station, and if we look at the topography, this area of land around here is really flat. I think this is where we want our blast furnace. Fantastic. Let's. What, what is that? That's a limestone mine as well. Two limestone mines right near the blast furnace. So we can actually put the blast furnace somewhere here in the middle. Get these in with road vehicles because it's a really short distance and road vehicles are usually quite good with that. And then we can bring the other stuff in further by train. Put a oh, steady. Put a line down here past the farm and get it straight in the annex and it's in flat ground. Yep, yeah, perfect. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's a bulk terminal. I thought we had a wharf right next to where we needed one, but then I bought one over here and spent nearly three million on that. I'll we'll have to bear that in mind. If we ever need any of those things, there is a bulk terminal right there. Okay, so this is where it's going to be. I say it's because I've already forgotten what it is. Uh, let's go. I'll be fine. Don't worry. I'll be fine. Uh, it is it, what we're bringing in. It's not pig iron. It's not iron ore. Is it? Oh, go on. Oh, cast iron. That was it. Blast furnace. Okay, this is where the blast furnace will be. I can't remember how to spell furnace, so I'll just put that for now. There we go, look. So we've got our blast furnace here. Um... And we can just put down the uh, local industries which we need to connect up. There's the one and two. Again, the world map should still have its options on. These options, I think, get cleared every time you uh, reload the game. So we've got uh, one, two there. We've got a little thing over here. That can be number three. And then over here, we'll have... Uh, this area is relatively flat, flat land, so it's not too bad. Um, there's another one for, I think that's five. And then this industry over here should be relatively straightforward to connect up as well. So we'll have six different industries all connected up to come into our blast furnace. So the only real remaining question is, is that for a blast furnace, what do you need to go in? So if we can find an existing one, oh, hang on, we can look at that. Let, let's let find an existing one, just, just for the fun of it. Uh, or is there a blast furnace around here somewhere? There is not. There's only 35 on the map, and they are miles away. Okay, so it's good that we're uh, funding our own. So what do we need to produce maximum production? We need to supply all three required cargoes at least once every three months. We need iron ore, coke, and limestone. So with the uh, coke, we'll be getting that from Hellish City. That's fine. Check. Iron ore. I don't think we did any iron ores. So if we turn that off, iron ore mines are the brown one. Oh, they are there. It's just I didn't see them because they're brown. I wasn't paying attention. Right. And we are getting the limestone because the limestone is coming from these uh, quarries. That's sand and limestone. And, of course, the limestone mine. So we need all four of those. 
and here are the other two, the two iron ore mines, and they're right near it as well. Oh, that's even better. So that's six. Okay, uh, where's my labels? Seven and eight. So there we go, folks. We've got a blast furnace to put in. We're going to be putting in um, a station there to bring the exports down to Hellish City Annex, where we're going to need an engine plant. We're going to need an extra station somewhere over here, or maybe extra platforms on Hellish City West, to get coke out. Now that's going to end up being quite a big station. Hopefully our station spread or whatever can cope with it. I'm not quite sure how we're going to do that yet. Um, and then we get that coke out up to the blast furnace with those uh, eight different inputs. Yeah, there we go. Solved it. Well, I think we're going to leave it there today, folks. We have made lots of improvements to the existing infrastructure. We're going to be bringing in lots of materials into Hellish City. It's going to be absolutely overflowing with everything that we need. And we've also planned for the future. If you want to see that live stream, I will be doing it on Tuesday at 8 o'clock UTC. So please come along to that. I look forward to seeing you there. Remember all your thoughts, ideas and questions down in the comments section and I will see you soon. But that's all from me for now. Thank you. Take care and goodbye.